What's going on? This is Big G from G Riders and welcome to another episode of Testing Rides. Today, I'm going to be testing out the 2018 Kia Soul. car for Kia that kind that they wanted to kind of bring in more sales bring in younger buyers by offering lots of lots of space lots of utility but also separate themselves from the rest of the cars on the market there on sale at that time was the the Scion XB and the Nissan Cube and those were the other two box cars but clearly 2018 you see who won won that fight in 2015 was the second generation of the Kia Soul, and the second generation of the Kia Soul got a lot more rounded, a lot more sleek, and a lot more, a lot better looking than the first generation. I like the first generation, but the second generation is way, way better. In 2014, they improved a lot of stuff from the pre, they improved a lot of complaints from the previous one. Some of the complaints from the previous body style Kia Soul is too much road noise, fuel economy wasn't great. And the, and the quality wasn't great, and they've improved that. They improved that about 70% across all models, in, basing up. So, so in 2017 was the face was the first face facelift for the second generation. And in the second generation of the Kia Soul, they made the Kia look more like a SUV crossover than just a plain run-of-the-mill um, hatchback. So they added some body cladding on the front, sides, and rear of the vehicle to make it look more rugged. And they also added the new Kia, Sur Kia Soul Turbo, which is is the Hyundai Veloster Turbo powertrain with 200 horsepower and the 7-speed dual clutch transmission. And I bet that thing's a lot quicker. I need to go out and drive one. But anyways, this is the Kia Soul Plus. This is the volume seller model. This is the model they're going to sell the most of. They sell these to literally everybody because this has the has the best price point. Even though the Kia Soul Turbo is a lot quicker, the Kia Soul Turbo is thirty thousand dollars, and thirty thousand dollars this is that's kind of expensive for a car like a car like this. This one, the Plus, is twenty thousand dollars, and you do get a lot of good standard equipment here in the Plus. 2018 you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard equipment you get a backup camera you get automatic headlights with fog lights and you also get automatic climate control that's just that's new for 2018 but besides that this is very this is kind of unchanged from the 2017 model for for that $20,000 price price range you get the 2 liter inline 4 cylinder making 161 horsepower and 100 and 150 foot pounds of torque and this car weighs 3,100 pounds, almost 3,200 pounds. Because this car has um, an average curb width for this size car, and it kind of sits high and it's not that aerodynamic, it only gets a reasonable 25 in the city and 30 out on the highway. Which is, it's not bad considering how high off the ground this car is and how much power and, and how much power and torque this vehicle has. Yes, 161 horsepower is not a lot, but it feels pretty, it feels pretty peppy. All right, I'm about to pull over here in a second to, see, to show you guys the interior to see how it is. And we'll get back out on the road. Here we are on the inside of the sole. And to be honest, the sole has a lot of fairly cheap materials inside. Like, the dash is okay, but you got that there. You got that there. You got the hard steering wheel here, but the kind of the point, kind of the stuff that you touch pretty often. They've done a good job of throwing a little bit of quality in here. So like where you where where I rest my arm to drive, it's actually not too bad. Like it's nice, like leatherette covered or leather covered or whatever this is. The steering wheel does feel a little bit cheap. I wish for this twenty thousand dollar price point they would give me a leather wrapped steering wheel, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal breaker with this car. Again, this is like a cheap economy site. Like, this is like considered like a cheap entry-level subcompact SUV. 
One thing I like is the shifter knob. It's this nice circle here. You just wrap around it and throw it into park, drive, whatever. Uh, the center console is nice and, nice and leather wrapped here. And everything is pretty clearly laid out. So you have a nice big screen here. This is standard for 2018 now. It comes to Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You got nice clear gauges nowadays. I mean, you got the, you got a big speedometer in the middle, a big tech tachometer on the side, and then you got your your, your temperature and your and your fuel level there. And honest, and, and the, info, the new infotainment system, Kia has, Kia's infotainment systems have have been good since the kind of the new generation of Kias came out back in 2013, 2014. Like this, it's really it's really intuitive. It's really easy to use. So like you see, you slide it like that. It's really simple, like that. Go home. Go to Apple CarPlay. Very easy to use. I like that about this interior. And the seats on this vehicle are they're cloth seats, but they're cloth seats, but they're very high they're they're very decent quality cloth seats. Like again, like the previous key that I tested last year, the sportage, it has the same type of seats where it's not like It has the same type of seats where it's not bad quality at all. They're very comfortable, they're very soft, and they don't seem like they're going to wear very bad. And I do kind of like this weird fidget spinner <laughs> type pattern in, in the seats here. That's pretty That's pretty cool. I like that. And then you got got some gray stitching around the sides, which is, you know, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So just kind of how you can see how I'm in here again. You guys know I'm a big guy. I'm a big man And I got plenty of head space in this car. I got plenty of room to move around I don't feel like I'm stuffed in here, and this is a great car if you're a big guy Great small car to have if you're a big guy. All right. Let's take a look at the back seat to see how that is So go ahead and open it up here there is a, lot, a decent amount of space in this back seat. This is where I this is where I sit to drive, and people people could fit behind me very very comfortable and very easily, and that's a great quality. That's the best thing about this Kia Soul is because because it has such a ha, such a has a tall roof for a small car like this. People have plenty of space to get in here, and the space is used very well. That's one thing I can give the, the Korean the Korean car makers is they use their space very well. Like their cars aren't always that big, but all their cars always come very very roomy, very roomy. I don't know what they're I don't know what they're doing, but the rest of the automakers need to kind of catch on to that and figure out how to make their cars more roomy without making them so big. But all right, let's take a look at the cargo space. As you can see back here. There's a decent amount of space back here. Like I have my camera bag there, and as you can see, it's not that spacious. But you got this nice cargo cover here that you can just fold, fold up, fold up and down. And then under here, you got this nice organizer bin. And if you want to, you could pull this out and actually put this thing lower. And also on the other side of this, it comes with the hard plastic. So if you're putting like dirt or something dirty back here, you don't have to get your carpet cargo liner dirty. You could just use this this one right here. And also you can put it under, you can pull this out and put this under here so you can get even more space. So that's, I mean, that's a very good feature that this car has. But overall, this is not too bad at all for space. All right, welcome to the road portion of the video. So the question is, is how does the 2018 Kia Soul drive? Well, the 2018 Kia Soul drives really really nice and what, what exactly does that mean well this car ha does not have a whole lot of road noise the cut the suspension is very comfortable and compliant there's not a ton of body roll when you're going through the corners and and, and, and the power feels pretty decent honestly for this size of vehicle like I like I said before I bet the turbo sole is a lot quicker but this is not bad at all like the steering is the steering is pretty electric, but I mean, what do you expect? It's, a, it's, a, it's basically an economy car. But one thing I do like about this car is you can change the you can change the weight of the steering. You got eco, sport, and normal. I prefer the sport settings because what that does, it holds gear. I mean, it's a, it's a sport mode, so it holds gears longer, and it basically tightens up the steering a little bit, so it feels a little bit more responsive. And then the eco is the loosest mode because that's how you get the the good fuel economy in this car. So, what kind of fuel economy? What, what kind of fuel economy was it, was I getting during my during my couple days in this car? So I've driven this car for about four days now, and I averaged about 
24 MPG, which is about average for, which which is pretty close to the city EPA. And I didn't do really any highway driving. I'm only really did city driving. And honestly, I was driving this car hard. And that's not too bad at all for the hard driving I did in this car. Some very, very positive things about this car is simply the way it handles. Like it handles, it does handle like a, a regular car. Like it doesn't handle like a subcompact SUV. Most, most subcompact SUVs I've driven, they handle like SUVs. So they don't like to, they don't like to turn in. They don't like to do anything in the corners. They just, you know, do what SUVs do. Just, you know, go along in the corners. Second thing I like is how the view out of the front window, out, front, out of the front windshield, like the view out of the windows in this car is excellent. Since it sits so high off the ground, you got a very commanding view of the road. You can see out of all the windows and mirrors pretty clearly. And blind spots aren't too bad at all. Yes, you do have blind spots over here in the when you look to the, look look at your blind spot when you look in the in the right hand corner because it's all pillar basically. But when you're looking out of the windows just to see where you're going, uh, it's very good. Pretty impressive actually. And actually, and kind of the last thing I would say is the fuel economy. With this car being pretty high off the ground as it is. Given the fuel economy that I got, the the 24 average is pretty was pretty was pretty respectable, honestly. Most cars that have this type of ground clearance don't get this good at gas mileage. Um, I tested the Renegade Jeep Renegade last year, and the Jeep Renegade struggled to get you know 22, 23 in the city, um, and that was you know, and I wasn't even driving that car as hard as I drove this Kia, so I'm pretty impressed. And again, like I said, like the uh, like the Jeep Renegade and the Fiat 500 X, those cars feel really big around corners, and this really doesn't. And I gotta applaud Kia for that. This is this is a great this is a great this is a nice balanced car for the size. So I've been praising this car, giving it, you know, talking about how well it drives and, and how practical this car is. But one, there's a couple things that I don't like about it. The first thing I don't like about this car is the price. $20,000 doesn't seem bad, but considering that this car doesn't have all-wheel drive, that's not good. And also, so one thing that Kia is doing nowadays, and they've been doing it for a couple years, kind of with the new generation cars, is if you want any options on your vehicle, you have to spend a lot of money. So to get the panoramic sunroof, power folding mirrors, push button to start, and all that stuff, yes, those are all like premium features, but to get any of that stuff, you have to spend at least $30,000 on this Kia Soul. And th this, that's spending $30,000 on the non-turbo Soul, which is kind of ridiculous, I gotta admit. And honestly, I feel like if they want to add more value for the money, especially with this car only being front wheel drive, this car should be only about $26,000, $27,000 and, and, and don't get anywhere near the $30,000 mark with the features. And the only one that can, can can be acceptable for $30,000 price range is the turbo because it comes with more performance, more power. But anything anything other than that needs to stay $25,000, $26,000. If, especially if you're not coming with all-wheel drive because if you cross shop this car with other subcompact crossovers, literally every single other crossover, excluding the the Toyota HRC, they all come with all-wheel drive. Like the HRV comes with all-wheel drive and is about 25 grand. The Fiat 500X, the Jeep Renegade, all come with all-wheel drive. You can get a, get a decently equipped one for about 25 grand. Literally, all the other crossovers have all-wheel drive, but yet this Kia Soul doesn't. And honestly, that might that could be one of the things that's holding this car back from selling. I mean, you see them everywhere, but they could sell even more if they were all-wheel drive as an option. Because I know I know a couple people that I've spoken to about the Kia Soul. It's like they would buy one if it was all-wheel drive. So Kia, please make an all-wheel drive Kia Soul. But besides that, besides those like small gripes about this thing, I, this is an excellent car. I mean, if you're looking for a subcompact crossover or even like a compact car with a lot of good space, you should look no further than the 2018 Kia Soul. So if you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, keep riding with me. Thanks for watching.